standalone anthology serial series. There are more variants, but uh, basically four types of commercial stories in novels, film, television, and you know technological variants now streaming. <clears throat> Often a commercially successful stand alone, written only expecting it to be one volume, is expanded into a serial or series. Lonesome Dove, for example, started as just, started actually as a screenplay and then uh, morphed into a novel and was commercially successful. New York Times bestseller. And it became part of a serial, the third of four. But uh, start with standalone examples. Um, Pride and Prejudice, Gone with the Wind, Lonesome Dove, By the Great Horde Spoon. In a standalone story, the main character has a once in a lifetime event. In a successful standalone story, Lucy Bennett accepts Mr. Darcy's proposal. Scarlett O'Hara loses both Rhett and Ashley. William F. Call loses his partner, Augustus McRae. Jack moves to California during the gold rush and makes his fortune. That's the key plot points in uh, Pride and Prejudice, Gone with the Wind, Loads and Dove, and By the Great Horn Spoon. So you got it, there's a single story about a single event. Now, an anthology series like Twilight Zone, Outer Limits, Craft Suspense Theater, Radio Mystery Theater, and Disneyland, the Sunday evening Walt Disney show, uh, were anthology series. Uh, they have a series of standalone stories, magazines. Uh, I was first published, 1968, short story in a magazine. That's what they, what they did. A lot more of them back then than now. I had to just now look up to see if Alfred Hitchcock Mystery Magazine was still in business. I, that's not where I was published, though. Now, serial examples. A serial is just one story longer than you will put in a short story or a novel. It will take multiple volumes. In print, that's Harry Potter is a serial story. It's one story, just like a standalone, but it's uh, uh, told in a series of novels. I have Breaking Bad on television. Again, that's one story told in several years of television. Um, the Rover Boys, Ruth Fielding, The Fugitive, or serial stories. Series examples, Wagon Train, Star Trek, Perry Mason, both the novels and short stories from 1933 and 1970 and the original television, 5766, um, you know, I, I read, I, I didn't read all 80 of the novels, and I didn't watch all 270 of the television shows, but I watched, I read many of the novels and watched much of the television. My dad and I would sit and watch that together. Dad didn't watch much television, but he liked Perry Mason. Uh, Doc Savage, The Shadow, Nancy Drew, The Hardy Boys, and Simpsons. Those are series. A well-done series, I think, is the most difficult writing. The writer must create continuing character that the reader enjoys their company, wants to come back for the next one, whether it's a novel or a TV show or film. Then the guest stars and recurring characters must be interesting. For the one-shot guest stars, however, this is a standalone story. Earl Stanley Gardner wrote that once he had his continuing characters created in his Perry Mason series, 
He began each new novel creating the standalone story for the murderer. That led to the creation of the victim and the wrongly accused who would be on trial, defended by Perry Mason. Now, I intended to uh, show you this book. I had it in my hand within the past few days, week. Secrets of the World's Best-Selling Writer, which he was, The Storytelling Techniques of Earl Stanley Gardner, published 1980. I checked it out of the library back in the 80s and read it, and then uh, <clears throat> I bought a couple copies, and I can't find either of them. See, I bought this in uh, 2010, and it's now 2024, so it was 14 years ago. Um, I also bought and intended to show and had it in my hands uh, The Secret of the Stratmeyer Syndicate uh, Nancy Drew, The Hardy Boys and the Million Dollar Fiction Factory It's about Edward Stratmeyer who <clears throat> I think he invented about 80 different series in his lifetime Pretty fascinating character So, uh, go over this a bit. Um, Stratmeyer wrote, created two serials, not series, Ruth Fielding and the Rover Boys. It's a one story, Ruth Fielding aged, the Rover Boys aged. In fact, uh, I don't remember how many novels, but after like 26 novels, he started writing about their children, the original Rover Boys children. So I just continued calling them the Rover Boys. Ruth Fielding, uh, I, she worked in different arenas as a nurse. I mean, was for a while, a traditional female. This was uh, both around the turn of the century, 1900s. Uh, <clears throat> but what Stratmeyer found, it became more and more difficult to write. So he said, next time, I'm not going to write a character that ages. So he created a, very close to each other, Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys, and they don't age. At least as he outlined them and uh, as far as I know in their stories. <clears throat> the um, Basically, that's what happens in... Uh, well done series. The Simpsons, they are all pretty much the same age as when they started back in the 80s. It's easier to do with cartoon characters. Uh, the Shadow and Doc Savage maybe aged a little, but uh, not significantly. Now, they were uh, creations of for hire of people for uh, uh, Street and Smith publications. The Shadow, uh, it's worth a lot more than just a few words here, but he, um, the magazine, uh, Mystery Detective Magazine, sponsored a radio show. The radio show was very popular. Orson Welles and others played the Shadow who introduced the stories. Uh, they wanted to trademark the Shadow, so they wrote a uh, book slash magazine uh, to get the trademark. And using the house name Maxwell Grant, Walter B. Gibson uh, wrote The Shadow. It was a major hit, sold 300,000 copies. And he just continued doing that. And I think it was 14 years. Uh, Writing the Shadow. <clears throat> Doc Savage, very similar, but it, was, it came from their success with the Shadow. They said, well, we got to create another character. So they created uh, Doc Savage, hired Lester Dent, who wrote most of them, but not all of them. Uh, just as Walter B. Gibson wrote most of the Shadow, he didn't write all of them, and Lester Dent didn't write all of them. 
So um, in a, a series, um, for the guest stars, it's a standalone story. For the uh, continuing characters, it's not. They're back every episode issue. Um, now, this is what I was going to explain that uh, Earl Stanley Gardner, uh, in that, that book by the Fugates, um, he wrote that, <clears throat> you know, once he had these standard continuing characters in Perry Mason, he began each new novel creating the standalone story for the murderer, and that led to creation of the victim and the wrongly accused on trial who Mason would defend. Okay, we covered that. Now, the reason why I, I went over this, um, I, uh, I've done previous uh, videos about um, scene sequel writing, and in fact, I've gone quite a ways toward writing a book about that. But I found I need to include this because people use these terms in vastly different meanings. So I wanted to make it clear the standalone story uh, is included in all of them, but it's for the guest stars in a series. Uh, in a series, you don't want the continuing characters changing. Here, I give an example of Star Trek, the original series. You don't want Mr. Spock changing every episode. Kirk and Spock and the crew are basically the same, unless there's a guest star that's part of the story. Okay, uh, I think that's made the point for this one. Um, standalone anthology serial series.